Hello everyone and today we're going to go over how to fix stripped holes for any of your vehicles. Now this is going to include how to fix any stripped holes in metal, aluminum, or plastic and this will not include a welder so this is where you can do it without a welder. Now I'm going to use an M6 today just because it's most commonly used on a vehicle because it uses a 10 millimeter socket. The first thing we're going to go over is how do you usually strip out a hole on a car? Well for most of you already know usually it starts by when you're cross threaded that's one of the most common reasons basically when you start off at an angle and you start threading in there. So let's see if I can actually do this on purpose. Usually you typically don't want it. You go at an angle and you start trying to thread it, it'll mess it up. And it's funny, when I want to do it on purpose, it doesn't want to cross thread. So as you can see, I'm starting to turn and it's at an angle. So it's getting really hard to turn, which means I'm screwing up those threads and it's going them up. So let's take this out. And the first way you can fix this is, now if you cross thread it and you go all the way down through all the threads, you already gold up those threads. It's shot. There's nothing you can do. But let's just say you only did the tip. That's no problem. You can easily fix that just by using a tap. So this is going to be the easiest way, but not the most common way to fix it. We have our M6 tap. I'm going to throw just a little bit of uh, tap magic on there. This is cutting fluid. And you just throw a little bit on there. And we're going to go ahead and make sure I'm going the right direction. And basically, start retapping it. And that's all you have to do. Now, as you feel resistance, just pull back. But since this is acrylic, it goes down very quickly. This tap has no problem cutting through it. And I'm going to go a little bit more just to be on the safe side. And this is very easy to tap, which is a good sign. And then we can go ahead and back out. There we go. Set that aside. Grab our M6. And it looks like... So that was the easiest route. Now let's go on to the next one. So the next way you usually strip a hole is, and I'll get this all the way down, is usually you over torque it. Now this is very common when someone takes usually the smaller screws or smaller bolts and really puts a lot of force on it. So I have a 10 millimeter socket and a socket wrench that I haven't lost yet. And I'm gonna see if I can over torque this. Yep, and right then and there, I just went ahead and stripped it out. So that is the second most common way you usually can strip out a hole is putting too much torque on the uh, hole you're working on. So let's see if we can get this out. And it looks like we stripped this out pretty good. Yep, took some plastic with it. All right, so now we got the hole nice and stripped out. Now let's go over the second method of fixing it. So the second method to fix this is these little round coils right here. These are coil inserts, or also known as heel coils. Basically, uh, if you look on the market and Google it, that's the name brand. And these coils work very simply. All you have to do is tap out the hole a little bit bigger to put these coils in, and it'll be the M6 thread. So usually these kits come with the coil, set that there, the actual wrench to turn it, and then obviously it comes with a tap and a drill. So pretty simple. So here's what we're going to do. Remove all this. And we're going to start by taking our drill bit that came with it. So I have my drill. I'm just going to drill down as straight as I can. Again, this is all eyeballing it just to show you an example. So that was pretty simple. We are able to drill out the hole. Now, let's go and grab the tap that came with it. So we have a beautiful tap right here that came with the set, and we're going to add a little bit of cutting fluid. Anytime you tap anything, it's always good to have cutting fluid, no matter if it's plastic, aluminum, steel, doesn't matter. We're going to start doing this as straight as humanly possible. So let's see if I can start doing this without making it too crooked. And I'm kind of eyeballing this with cameras in the way, so bear with me. All right, now we're starting to cut it in, which is good. All right, feeling resistance, so we're going to back out. Anytime you feel resistance, always back out because you can always go back in because you don't want to ever break your tap. Now, usually in a plastic, you don't have to worry about this as much, but if you're doing steel, it's a very good chance you could break, break your tap. So we're going to add a little more cutting fluid. And continue on. We're going to back on out. Clean out our cutting area, and let's see if we can do one more pass. Tapping a hole is a very long and tedious process. Next, we need to clean away all this oil just to get out of there, because I'll show you why in a second. So we're going to go ahead and douse this in alcohol. And I'm going to cheat, I'm going to lift up the clock. So now that we have it nice and clean, we're going to take one of these coils, apply just a little bit of Loctite on the outside. 
like so. Just like that. Then we're going to take our nice little tool that came with it. And it's going to look just like that. So that way you can turn it. And now all you have to do is just insert it like a bolt. And we're not going to go in all the way. We're just going to go in just till it's about flush. Right there. So these coils come in various lengths. You can get them as long as you need. I just got a small one just for this video. But if you need to, you can get one half an inch or even bigger. But for this, this will just show you how we do it. After you allow the Loctite to sit in there a little bit, let it dry because you don't want that coil to move. There is a chance you can actually turn the coil as you're tightening a bolt in there. So always add a little bit on the outside, just to give it a chance to be a little more permanent. And once you have it to the depth you want, we're gonna take this one little tool here, it's a little punch, because we wanna knock out that one piece at the bottom. And there you go. So now, all we do is that little piece right there, all we do is knock it out so it looks like that. And now all we have to do is take our bolt, and there you go. So that's the second way how you can fix a stripped hole. Now let's go for the third way. All right, now my third method is probably my favorite. It's these threaded steel inserts. These are pretty cool to have. This works really good on steel and various other materials. But if you really want to have something you can really torque down, these are the ones to use. And these are very similar to the heel coils. It's just they're a little bit more durable. So again, if you need something you want to torque down, I even seen these used on engine blocks before. So these are really cool to have. All it is is basically a bolt with the inside threaded as well. So once you tap it and screw it into your block or whatever you're working on, that now be bond because it has red thread locker right there. It makes it a little bit more permanent. It almost becomes part of the actual material you're bolting it to, which is really cool. So we're gonna drill this out and go ahead and put this steel insert in there. So for this one, this is a 3 8 by 16. So it requires a 5 16 drill. It's gonna be a little bit bigger than the rest of them. Sometimes you can't always use these just because you can't drill it out as much. The helo coil, you can drill it out just a little bit and get a hill coil in there. But this one's gonna require a lot more surface area. So if you're working on something that has very thin walls where it's plastic or metal, you may not be able to do this. But if you have something with a lot of surface area, this may be your best choice. So I have my drill, drill bit, 5 16 We're just gonna drill this out. Now we're gonna grab our tap tool. And this one we can't use my ratchet, it's a little too big for the tap. And then some cutting fluid. Again, never have too much. I'm going to try my best to start as straight as possible, but I probably won't. Okay, we might have actually got on the first try. And then we'll back out, starting to get a little tight. We'll cut fluid. And we'll go at it again. Again, when it comes to tapping anything, slow is the smoother out. You don't ever want to break a tap, because then you'll be really in a pickle. Now let's go ahead and clean this out. Use some rubbing alcohol just like we did earlier because again, we want that thread locking compound to stick. And again, I'm gonna cheat. I'm just gonna pick it up and clean all this off and soak it up with uh, alcohol. All right. And then all you have to do is take your steel insert and just start screwing it in. And then if you look at the top, it has slots right there so you can use a flathead screwdriver and tighten it down. And that's about flush right there. Then of course you want to give this time to set so that way that thread locking compound actually adheres to the part you're working on. You now it's done, you're pretty much it. And then and that M6 fits in there perfectly. So that one was pretty easy. Now for the last method. But our very last method is a little different. This one is called a cold weld. It's basically using a like a two-part epoxy. So we have a hardener and a resin. So that way when you mix it in there, it becomes hard as steel. Now on the back of some of these, it says it can pretty much save an engine, save you thousands of dollars. Now I've used this before, it's actually pretty cool. So this set right here is gonna take about 24 hours to cure. So let's go ahead and mix it and we'll show you how we're gonna do it. I'm gonna cheat a little bit. Now whatever you're working on, not all holes are gonna be through holes. Some of them are just gonna be tapped in. But I'm gonna put tape at the bottom just so it doesn't leak through all over my truck. But if you're working on something as a through hole, put something on the back like a piece of tape just so it doesn't drip all the way through. We're gonna grab ourselves a little mixing cup. Now you use the packaging if you want because it has a little cavity in there, but I went ahead and had to grab a glass just because I can. Now the way you use most of these, usually you use your steel, which is one color, and you want to put equal amounts of both. So I'm just going to go ahead and squeeze just a little bit in here. There we go. Nice little glob. And then I'm going to grab the hardener and do the same thing. 
and put about the same amount. And it's going to be just a ballpark. And then we're going to go ahead and grab a mixing stick and we're going to mix this up. You want to mix it up so it's nice, even color. It should turn out for this particular one, it should come out as a nice little gray. I'm going to try to scrape as much as I can off the sides. You have a nice gray color. So now we're just going to go ahead and fill in this hole. And it's not going to be clean, but there is a method to the madness. I have another stick here so I can just go ahead and feed it down there. I'm going to keep scooping it in. You basically want to try to overflow it. And we'll just use the last bit here, feed it right down in there. And there we go. So we filled it up right to the top. Looks pretty good. So now let's go ahead and clean up the excess because we don't want this looking like crap when we're done. So I'll go ahead and take a razor blade and I'm going to scrape away all this excess just like so. And all you have to do is take a paper towel. So now we have filled this in with a cold weld epoxy. This is something we're going to let for set for 24 hours and we'll come back and do the next one. So I already have one that's already been sitting for 24 hours that already hardened. So I'm just going to remove the tape off the bottom. There we go. And we'll go ahead and take its place. Perfect. And for this one's pretty easy. All you have to do is now that we've filled it in, we just have to re-drill it and re-tap it. So I have an M5 drill bit. And I'm going to see if I can get somewhat center here. Let's go ahead and grab our M6. And I go back to my ratchet now. As usual, we'll go ahead and take some cutting fluid. And let's go ahead and tap it. Again, forgive me for being crooked if I am. I'm kind of eyeballing this from a very odd point of view. And we'll back her out. Always clean your tap and clean your hole as often as you can. That way it gives you a nice clean cut. And since it went pretty easy this time, let's see if we can go all the way through. Since this has already been tapped before, it just makes our job pretty easy. And there we go. And then we'll back her out. And there we go. And it looks like that worked out very well. All right, now going over these methods, we did the tap method, which works pretty good if you only cross thread it just a little bit. But anytime you actually mess up the threads or go up the threads enough, this is probably not what you want to do. But this is probably your first action just to try to clear it out. And the second method is going to be your threaded coils. These are pretty cool. Now anytime you do something that doesn't require a lot of torque, these are actually pretty good, pretty cheap. And something that's a little bit more expensive are these steel threaded inserts. These are really cool, but they get a little bit on the pricey side. So as far as cheapness, this is probably the cheapest route. Then this route, probably be a third, would probably be your two-part epoxy. In other words, your cold weld. So anytime you mix something together and wait 24 hours, give you a nice little liquid steel there. That would probably be your third most expensive. Probably your most expensive would probably be these threaded steel inserts. So as far as the order, it's one, two, probably three, and then four. But as far as strength, that's probably going to be your least favorite because the threads are probably already gold up. That's probably going to be your second. These two, depending on your applications, may be tied for third. This is probably my favorite just because it doesn't require 24 hours and I actually feel that it holds really nice. But this one, if you're in a pinch, if you don't have any of these two and you have epoxy, go for it, use it, just wait your 24 hours and then go ahead and drill and retap. So these are just four methods of how to fix a stripped hole. Now there are other methods out there, but these are just four simple ones in case you strip out any of your bolts on your vehicle. Well, hopefully you found this video helpful. If you did, please like and subscribe. Blooper reel.